In today's Luke reading, we hear of Jesus traveling to the top of a mountain. He begins to pray, and his disciples notice that they can see Moses and Elijah with Jesus, and his face and clothes begin to glow. Now this may seem a little strange to us nowadays, as people's clothes rarely glow. But the way I see it is that his face and really his whole self is set aglow. He has been imparted some divine knowledge, and this knowledge has been passed directly from God through Moses and Elijah. This is no ordinary knowledge. This is a deeper understanding of what God's intentions are. And this will change his life forever. It's rare for such a realization to happen these days, but when it does, you know. We call these type of epiphanies mountaintop experiences. At this point, Jesus has been baptized, he's read in the synagogue, and he's spent his time in the desert. Now that he has had his mountaintop experience, he's changed how he does and sees things forever. This is essentially the end of his education, and he is ready to start doing the major and important things. These experiences are important for us as they give us purpose and passion and show us where we are meant to go. How many of you made New Year's resolutions this year? And how many of you have already given up on one or more? Mountaintop experiences are not New Year's resolutions. This is a divine revelation to Jesus that gives him insight into what he must do. I went on a trip this past summer. Instead of telling you all my stories at once, I'm going to save most of them for another time. On June 12, 2012, I went to the Yongdongpo district in Seoul, South Korea, as part of my larger two-week trip that included two other countries. I went to Yoido Park, right in the middle of the wealthiest business district in the Eastern Hemisphere, where there were members of the Mass Media Labor Union on strike. The union includes members of all four major broadcasting companies in the country, and the only newspaper distribution company in South Korea. Of the 12,000 workers in this union, 4,000 of them went on, May, or went on strike May 28th, 15 days before I met them. All of the other employees in the union, about 8,000, were still in support of this strike, but did not strike themselves for fear of losing their positions. Five days before I spoke to these people, they were told by their employers that they had been replaced, and not to bother coming back to their jobs ever again. They remained where they were and continued demonstrating, despite the fact that they were no longer employed. Replacing a union job because the worker is on strike is an illegal practice in Canada and the US, but in South Korea there are no laws protecting the positions of union workers. These people did not strike for better wages, despite the fact that they are paid an average of 40 Canadian dollars a day for up to 10 hours of work. And they did not strike for better working conditions, despite the fact that those conditions are terrible and there are about 30 work-related deaths per year in their union. These people are striking because they are being forced to censor what they broadcast and what they print. They're not given the freedom of the press that is guaranteed to them in South Korea's constitution, and so they are striking. I spoke with a man who was fasting for the length of the strike. He had not consumed anything but water for 15 days and there was no sign of him giving up. This surprised me, and it affected me very deeply. These people are fighting selflessly for their right to expose the truth without censorship. They put the rights of Korean people before anything else, and were fighting for what they believed was right. This, for me, was life-changing. You can hear about terrible tragedies on the news, and you can read about it in the paper, but nothing really hits home as well as seeing it with your own two eyes. Observing these people and hearing their stories really opened my eyes and mind and helped me see how easy it is to take things for granted where I live. I can almost always expect the things I hear on the radio or read in the newspaper to be truthful without even stopping to think about it. But even in countries such as Korea, where they're more technologically advanced than we are, or and just as first world as we are, these are things you cannot always expect to have. And by the way, no matter how much research I did, I couldn't find a single source online or in print that mentioned this strike or whether it was still happening. I suppose they haven't convinced their bosses to take a stand just yet. The important thing about a mountaintop experience, though, isn't just that it's cool to look at, or maybe it strikes you as a unique situation, but that it actually changes who you are, and for more than a couple of weeks. 
It's not just what you do when you have this experience, but how you carry it with you, and how you can be that example of a changed person. My experience with the striking mass media labor union workers, in conjunction with many other experiences, have really changed who I am as a person. I've never really looked at a newspaper the same way since, and I don't watch television news, but I'm sure it would have the same effect. It's encouraged me to really think about how lucky I am to live a privileged life, and to be able to trust the systems in place to keep me healthy and alive, and informed and educated. I've slowly been learning to be content with what I have, instead of focusing on what I don't. That is one of the toughest things to do, but I feel it's necessary to do when for so long I've lived a selfish and greedy life. That's my biggest challenge, but it's also my challenge to you. Take time to notice things around you. Stop and wonder how the items in your home went from minerals in the ground to the refined and useful product that it is today. Question why rules exist and try to understand them so that you can have a better understanding of how the systems in place in our country help protect our freedoms. Don't take for granted that there are literally billions of people in the world who do not have the right or the ability to speak freely about politics, leadership, or their own religious views. Cherish everything, and I think you will find things aren't as bad as they might always seem. In our Exodus reading today, we hear about Moses traveling to the top of a mountain. When he's at the top of this mountain, he's imparted some divine knowledge. With this new knowledge given to him from God to share with the world, his face is set aglow. This is a mountaintop experience. Moses brings the two tablets of covenant law down from the mountain and shares them with the people. His face is glowing this whole time. This scares the people, as they aren't sure about whether they want to see God or not. I think the idea of staring God right in the eyes might be a scary one, and not something everyone's prepared to see. So Moses wore a veil at all times, except when he talked to God. He does this at the request of the Israelites he travels with. These people are scared of the divine, and scared of the truth. We cannot be that people. We cannot let ourselves be afraid to open up to the divine. As is said in the second epistle to the Corinthians, whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord. In other words, we need to let God into our lives. We need to keep our eyes and hearts open to the divine. We cannot let fear of truth stop us from anything. As long as we accept the Creator into our hearts and minds, we can overcome. We can stop oppressing governments and stand together for what is just. May it be so.